Hey, what's up, everybody? I am Maxwell Faulkner, and welcome in to the Real Role Models in Sports here on the Don't Tell Mama Sports Podcast. You know, I'm going to be honest with all of you. Initially, I didn't want to join in on this sports topic. I was holding back when all this hype started because I didn't like how sports analysts or news anchors or, I mean, even podcasters were portraying this athlete's success to be. The media wasn't portraying her to be the star athlete, which she is, and anyone with working eyes can see that. They were saying she is receiving all this hype because she is a white, feminine, tall, and pretty woman. In case we haven't guessed it already, I'm talking about women's basketball phenom, Caitlin Clark. Now, for those of you who don't know who Caitlin Clark is because you live in a cave with cavemen and hunt with a stick and a rock, let's dive into why she became such a sensation in the sports world in the first place. First and foremost, Caitlin Clark broke the Division I NCAA scoring record. And yes, that is the men's and the women's scoring record. She beat out NBA legend Pistol Pete Maravich's record, which he had 3,667 points. Caitlin Clark had 3,951 points. This is an incredible accomplishment. But you know what I noticed? I noticed so many people in the comments sections just don't seem to agree with me. They just don't seem to agree with what Caitlin Clark did. They don't think this is a, an incredible accomplishment. I've heard from some people say she played five years in college because of the COVID year. She had five years under her belt. So since this is 2024 and we all have the internet, right? We all know what the internet is, considering that you were all able to comment on my YouTube channel and comment in my videos. Uh, I would also assume that you can use the internet to type in Caitlin Clark's college stats on Google. But you know, I'm just assuming, once again, I don't want to make an ass out of me, I'm just assuming, but for those of you that don't know how to use Google or just the internet in general, Caitlin Clark started playing basketball, college basketball that is, in 2021, which was after COVID. She played four seasons to break that record, which even NBA greats who played four years in college weren't able to accomplish. Some examples of these players would be Steve Nash, Shane Battier, Damian Lillard, David the Admiral Robinson, Grant Hill, J.J. Redick, Patrick Ewing, Scotty Pippen, Draymond Green, and who can forget my favorite player of all time, Tim the Big Fundamental Duncan. <laughs> I've also heard people in the comments say, Pistol Pete only played three years in college. That's not fair. That's not Caitlin Clark's fault. Pistol Pete could have stayed four years in college, but he left to go play in the NBA. Caitlin Clark stayed to graduate and receive a major in marketing, minor in communications, and to, of course, beat Pistol Pete's record. You can't put that against her. Stop it. Everyone calm down. All right? She beat the record. Jeez. Finally, which this is actually one I can agree with. People in the comments say Pistol Pete had no three-point line. You were right about that. And I believe that there should be two categories for the NCAA records. A three-point era and a non-three-point era. That makes sense, right? But since we do not have these categories, Caitlin Clark has the NCAA scoring record by 284 points. And that's a fact. You can either accept it or be as salty as a saltine cracker with a slice of salty cheddar cheese while floating in the salt-dense Red Sea being eaten by a salt-drenched sailor. Ya feel me? Now, even though Caitlin Clark achieved this record from her hard work and dedication that she put into the gym every single day, there's a side of media that keeps pushing that because of the color of her skin, this is why she is receiving so much publicity. Revenue is increasing in the WNBA because viewers are starting to watch the games because of Caitlin Clark, 
But no, 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 no. Let's ruin that success by making it about race. Don't believe me. Oh, which, again, I hear from people in the comments all the time saying, oh, you're such a liar. You're a liar. Here's a clip from the worst show on television, The View, where Sonny Houston claims Caitlin Clark is receiving all this hype because of white privilege, pretty privilege, and, wait for it, tall privilege. Check out this video. I do think that there is a thing called pretty privilege. There is a thing called white privilege. There is a thing called tall privilege. And we have to acknowledge that. And so um, the, part of it is about race. Caitlin Clark is bringing this money, these sponsorships, we hope, we hope into the league and other players will benefit yeah. from it. But I do think that she is more relatable to more people because she's white, because she's attractive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As if The View doesn't give us enough material to joke about. Tall privilege? Really? Sonny, with all due respect, you're an idiot. And no degree or opinions on The View will change my view on you. Tall privilege. Just like white or pretty privilege, right? Now tall people have to feel bad for short people who do not have the same genetics as they do. Hmm. Oh, so sad and so dumb. And the fact that these women are apparently supposed to be the voices for people who don't know how to have an actual opinion for themselves, it's just sad. And I would hope those people who watch The View grow the hell up and do some research for themselves so they can know the facts rather than the opinions of women who have no idea what the hell they are talking about. So hence why I had to jump on this bandwagon. Caitlin Clark is popular because she is a generational talent. But mostly liberal media outlets out there want to shit on her by saying that her popularity has nothing to do with her talent, but rather her skin color, pretty face, and height. So I couldn't help but want to show why Caitlin Clark is such a sensation. Not based on her skin color, but based on her style of play and just how great of a person she is on and off of the court. You know what impresses me about Caitlin Clark? It's her ability to keep her composure on and off of the court. We all remember when Kennedy Carter came from behind and blindsided Caitlin Clark to the floor when she didn't even have the ball, right? In case we all missed that, here's the video. Wow, what a dirty ass play made by a dirty ass player while another dirty ass player, Angel Reese, cheered on that dirty ass play that a dirty ass player made. You feel me? So even though Caitlin Clark was blindsided, she got back up and she played the rest of the game with no complaints. Here's some quick comments Clark had after that game. Check it out. That's just not a basketball play, but, um, you know, got to play through it. That's what basketball's about at this level. Yeah, I wasn't expecting it, but I think it's just like, just respond, come down, let your play do the talking. It is what it is. Um, it's a physical game. Um, go make the free throw and then execute on offense. And I feel like that's kind of what we did, but, you know, it, it is what it is, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> that's the tough player Caitlin Clark is. She plays her game. She doesn't allow others to take her out of her game. And she's even polite about those dirty ass players making dirty ass plays on her. Are you kidding me? So you all might be thinking, well, that's just one dirty play. Just get over it already, would ya? Okay, fair enough. But how about when Angel Reese hit Caitlin Clark across the head when going up for a layup? Check out this video real quick. Go, 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 go. Clark, hammer. Three Sky players coming over. And a tough foul, I believe, to Angel Reese. Yep, across the head. And they will go to the monitor to review this one. Yeah, that's, the that's right. Is being reviewed for a possible upgrade to a player. I think it'll be upgraded here. I'll be honest. That was a basketball play.
All right, a lot of the, the media was saying, oh, geez, you know, it's such a dirty play. I mean, yeah, but she was going for the ball. All right, Angel Reese was going for the ball. She missed the ball, and she smacked the shit out of Caitlin Clark, sending her to the floor. Now, you know, here's the thing, is that it was called a flagrant, so I'm not jumping out of my seat about this. Though I do believe Angel Reese is a cocky-ass basketball player, and it was terrible timing considering Kennedy Carter threw Clark to the floor about a week earlier. So, you know, it didn't really help the case. But after the game, here's Caitlin Clark in a press conference interview, also saying that Angel Reese's play was a basketball play. Check it out. When you get flagrant foul by Angel Reese, what's going through your mind, and how do you just stay within yourself to finish the game? What's going through my mind is I need to make these two free throws. That's all I'm thinking about. Um, it's just a part of basketball. It is what it is. Um, you know, she's trying to play, make a play on the ball and, and, and get the block. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it happens. If you're interested in hearing a more in-depth conversation on these particular plays and topics, check out Are You Kidding Me? Kennedy Carter and Angel Reese on the Don't Tell Mama Sports Podcast. So I brought up how people are trying to pull the race card with Caitlin Clark, right? Check out Caitlin's answer when a race baiter tried to reel her in. He really tried to get her with a race question. Check this out. Caitlin, I know you mentioned that, you know, you want to focus straight on basketball. Definitely respect that. But when, just to ask you directly, when people use your name for racism, misogyny, whatever, yeah. what is your response to that? <laughs> yeah, I think it's disappointing. I think, um, you know, everybody in our world, you know, deserves the same amount of respect. The, the women in our league deserve the same amount of respect. So, um, People should not be using my name to push those agendas. Um, it's disappointing. Um, you know, it's, it's not acceptable. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, this league is a league I grew up admiring and wanting to be a part of. Like, some of the women in this league were my biggest idols and role models growing up and helped me want to achieve this moment right here that I get to play in every single night. So, um, just treating every single woman in this league with the same amount of respect, I think it's just a basic human thing that everybody should do. Like, you know, just be a kind person and treat them, you know, how you would want to be treated. And um, I think it's, you know, very simple. Perfect answer, right? Treat people how you want to be treated. It's that simple. Well, she's absolutely right. And this is why Caitlin Clark is a real role model in sports. Yes, the way she plays is incredible, but it's also how she treats people that puts her above and beyond. It's how she handles herself off the court with journalists. She always seems to have the perfect answer. Speaking of perfect answers, let's compare how Caitlin Clark answers questions in the media room compared to, oh, I don't know, Kalia Cooper. Let's watch these videos and let's determine who uh, people would rather watch. Okay, you'll be you decide. You decide. This looks like the best production. You didn't get a lot of it in this game here. Talk about what they need to do going forward. You said what? The bench. Uh -huh. Not score a lot in this game here. Give you a lot of production. What do you have to do next in the next few games to help you guys most likely get to the next level? What does the bench have to do? Yes. Man. What did you? <laughs> I was saying that the bench didn't give a lot of production today in this game here. What do they got to do to help you all out as, the, as what they did in the previous game? What, what they got to do? What they do last game? That's a real question? You for real? No, what I'm asking is just really trying to get an idea of what they need to do. To so what the bench do the last game? They have to play well. They play well. So what they, what they do this game? She said today they didn't do well this okay, game. Okay, so what they got to do? Score, Four. right? Yep. All right, bet. That's it, right? Yep. I was somebody that grew up like loving women's athletics, whether it was soccer, whether it was basketball, whether, you know, whatever it was. Um, I always had it on. I always wanted to support it. So um, I think it just shows when given an opportunity, like women's sports are certainly an amazing thing and fun to watch. And um, they're only on the rise. I think people are, are finally starting to realize how great of a product that can be shown when they're given an opportunity to play on national television or, you know, play in front of in big stadiums where people can buy tickets and get in a seat. And I think once people come and watch one time, like they can't get enough of it and they continue to come, come back. And uh, to be a small part of, of that is, is super fun. Like, obviously, we get to play in front of a sold out crowd of 17,000 people. And that's not ever something you take for granted. Like, I mean, the crowd, that energy just helps us and allows us to thrive off of it. But, um, you know, it's it's one of the coolest parts of our job for Hilarious, right? 
Now, there's more videos out there that show the difference between past WNBA players and the present Caitlin Clark, but let's just leave it at that. Leave it in the comments. Who do you believe was better at the interview? Just, just you know, leave it in the comments. With the Olympics already taking off, how about when Caitlin Clark was snubbed from Team USA Women's Basketball for the Paris Olympics? Team USA's excuses why Caitlin Clark didn't make the team included... The players were afraid that Caitlin Clark's millions of fans would be upset for her limited playing time. Players were upset that they wouldn't receive as much recognition as her. And they said she didn't have experience in overseas play. <laughs> All excuses, not reasons, people. Even though Team USA's excuses are ridiculous, and it's really their jealousy and envy that kept her off the team, Check out Caitlin Clark's answer when she was asked about being snubbed from the team. Check this out. Caitlin, what was your reaction when you saw the USA team yesterday, the roster come out? Yeah, I think uh, I'm excited for the girls that are on the team. Um, I know it's the most competitive team in the world, and I know it could have gone either way of me being on the team, me not being on the team. So, um, you know, I'm excited for them. Uh, I'm going to be rooting them on to, to win gold. Um, I, I was a kid that grew up uh, watching the Olympics. So, um, yeah, it'll be, it'll be fun to watch them. What was your level of disappointment not hearing your name on the roster? Honestly, no disappointment. Like, I think it just gives you something something to work for. Um, you know, it's a dream. You know, hopefully one day I can be there. And uh, I think it's just a little more motivation. Uh, you, you remember that. And, um, you know, hopefully in four years, when four years comes back around, you know, I can be there. Like I said, she always seems to have the perfect answer. Girls all around the United States and, hey, even the world are noticing. Hell, I'm a dude, and I'm noticing how great of a role model she is in sports. To top it all off, Caitlin Clark and the WNBA All-Stars beat Team USA 117 to 109 during the WNBA All-Star game. Caitlin Clark set a record in the All-Star game by dishing 10 assists. Kelsey Plum was even trying to face guard Clark during the game. Check out this video. It didn't end up well. Clark is too damn smart, and what a hell of a pass. If you're interested in hearing more about how Team USA snubbed Caitlin Clark from the team, check out Are You Kidding Me? Team USA Women's Basketball on the Don't Tell Mama Sports Podcast. Caitlin Clark is even helping families outside of basketball. When a family from Boone County, Indiana lost their house in a fire, Caitlin Clark bonded with the children of the family by blocking the shit out of a seven-year-old's shot. One week ago, an unlikely rivalry was formed. In that moment, according to seven-year-old Eli Cross's calculations, the ball should have flown right over the head of Indiana Fever point guard Caitlin Clark. It really wasn't fair because she's so tall and good. The video of Clark blocking Eli's shot was an instant hit on social media. Hey, kids gotta learn how to compete without it being handed to them, right? Right? Obviously, I'm kidding. And Caitlin was also obviously messing with this kid. And in doing so, those kids fell in love with their hero. The family even received courtside tickets to watch Caitlin play. Check out this amazing story. But in the background, volunteers were building the house the Young Fever fans family will move into later this year. We were living in a trailer um, that was, you know, starting to fall apart and we had a house fire and we lost everything. Dustin Crossed is a hard-working parent of three, facing rising rent costs and doing it all by himself. Never expecting the surprises his kids' favorite basketball team and Zionsville company Group 1001 had in store for them. She bought your shot. <laughs> yeah, she's not my best friend for that. Though Eli soon forgave Clark as the Crosses approached their courtside seats at Sunday's Fever game against the Chicago Sky. When he told us, we, my sisters and me screamed, and my dad thought 
half of Lebanon heard it. When I saw her, I ran and she picked me up when I was hugging her. What up, homie? How are you? Guess who I found? Wait, it birthday, felt unreal. Birthday? It definitely felt like I was just like sitting up really close to a TV. That game drew record-breaking viewership. Defense! Defense! It's, this is something you don't ex get to experience every day, so for them to be able to have that is just amazing. This is a memory that that family will get to share for forever, and for me, like, that's super cool. That means, you know, so much more than, you know, me getting to suit up and play. Caitlin Clark, you are a real role model in sports. You continue to show the sports world what a true role model is, not only on the court, but off the court as well. Not only can you play basketball at an elite level that inspires young athletes to want to play like you, but you show how much you care about your teammates, your fans, and the communities all throughout Indiana. When players shove you to the ground, you get back up and finish the game. When the media tries to pull the race card on you, you give them the most respectful answers that even shocks journalists. When you got snubbed from Team USA because of jealousy issues, you stayed humble and said it gives you something to aspire to and that you admire those players. Caitlin Clark, you are something the sports world has never seen before in the WNBA. And know the view, it's not a white, straight, tall, pretty woman. She's an athlete who broke records, stays strong and keeps fighting game after game, keeps her composure on the court, says the right things to the media for everyone to see, cares about her fans and the communities they live in, and hell, why not? The fact that she's a woman and doing all of this, it's badass, and I love seeing how she is changing the WNBA for the better. WNBA players might not like the change at the moment, but when they start making more money due to viewership going up, they'll come around and hopefully, hopefully, they'll start seeing Caitlin Clark's game on and off the court with their eyes instead of looking through their ass. And that is why everyone, Caitlin Clark is a real role model in sports. Hey, thank you everybody for coming out to the Don't Tell Mama Sports Podcast tonight. Please like, comment, and subscribe. We would love to hear from you. How do you all feel about Caitlin Clark being a real role model inside of sports? Leave it in the comments. And as usual, tune into another edition of the Don't Tell Mama Sports Podcast coming soon. We will see you all then. Thank you, everybody.